Välkommen till en intervju som jag ska göra här i Bischofto tillsammans med Pastor Deres Lakev. Jag har ju varit här i Etiopien under en veckas tid och varit ganska oroligt norrut men vi har inte märkt av någonting där vi har varit. Men det är en glädje för mig nu att ha Pastor Deres vid min sida. Welcome Pastor Deres. Welcome, welcome. Ja, yeah. you. Um, you are now participating in a TV program in Sweden. So I say welcome. Thank you very much for you having me. Tell me a little about your background. I think you are coming from a traditional Ethiopian church family. You grew up like that. Is that correct? Yes, I came from the Orthodox background. I came from that family. So you were an Orthodox Christian in your young days. Yes, I have been an Orthodox Christian. But your father was not happy when you got saved. Yes, as I told you earlier, you know, my father was not happy. He really, really was not happy. And one time I remember that he scared me if I saw you in the Protestant church again. And if I hear anything about you connecting with this religion, I'm going to kill you, he said. But you got saved. You were born again. And you got a hunger after God. You applied to a Bible school because you felt, I want to be a preacher. Yes, actually, before I joined the Bible college, God gave me a vision. And I understand that he called me for the ministry of uh, uh, God or the kingdom of God works. How old were you? That time, actually, uh, when I am a little, little boy, like in 1990, something like that, in European calendar, 1990, when okay. I, I've been like, uh, you know, very younger. 18, 16 years old? Like so? 15, 15 year old. Something. You had a vision? Yes, I had a vision. That time, the moment I received Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus revealed to me. And I saw an angel many times. He revealed to me. I know on that time that he called me for the ministry of God. You understood I will be a preacher. Then after that, you know, if God's called you, you know, you should have to prepare yourself. In my mind, I should have to prepare myself with the word of God. That's why I joined the Bible college. But also that time you met a girl and, and she became your girlfriend and later you married with her. You were quite young when you met your wife. Yes, actually, to, to tell you shortly, after I received Jesus Christ, because of my father, I backslide before. In that time, I went to the uh, eastern part of Ethiopia. Then I met my wife as a girlfriend and I introduced with her. But she's not coming from a Christian background. Yes, I am also backsliding Christian. Yeah. And she was a, a, a Muslim girl, fully Muslim. She, yeah. You know, you could not found any Christian in her no. lives. No. She came from uh, other people. But she became a Christian. Then finally, you know, uh, after we start to leave each other, <coughs> and uh, I came back to Jesus Christ, and then I testify for her, and she saw Jesus Christ too. And then she had a vision she of Jesus. Yes, she saw Jesus Christ in a vision. And then she received Jesus Christ, and then we lived. But I think her mother and father was not happy. Yes, her mother and father. You know, in Ethiopia they said kafir. You know, they don't need to mix any Christian in their vibes, so they don't need her. They neglect her, they push her out. This Even is many go. years ago, and I think they have not met her for many, many years. Yeah, this is 20 years before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost 20 years. And now you have a family. We will put the family in the picture here. Can you say the name of your children? Yes, now we married each other, we live each other. We, are, we both are a minister of God. My wife also, she served the Lord Jesus Christ, and we have blessed and we are blessed for the, with four children two boys and two girls and the first uh, daughter you know the name of my first daughter is uh, rita and the second one is, is also a daughter a girl and her name is uh, sophia and the third one is a boy his name is ebenezer and the fourth one is benjamin who is a boy wonderful 
Uh, my experience is every time I meet a man of God where the ministry is expanding, it very often start with a strong vision. How did it come that you were planning to build a church and planning to start a church here in Bishofto? Can you tell me? Yeah, I haven't planned anything on my heart. This is God's plan. First, if anybody wants to do God's work, he should have to have a vision. This is what I advise. Even for me, when you come to my life, for me, I received a vision before I planned the church. Then after that vision, I planned the church. And the church is expanded. Because if you receive the vision, God is going to provide you. Because this is a divine vision, not coming from your heart. It's not novel. It's ca it came from heaven. That's why God is with me still. That's wonderful. Because you told me when you started, you rented a place and it was only you, your wife and your children sitting there. And, and that was how you started at church. But you kept on preaching. You took up offering. You were singing. But only you, your wife, and your children. It was the turning point. Yeah. yeah, actually, after I received, uh, you know, the vision, I am waiting and waiting. And that time, we don't have church, even renting church. We don't have nothing. And me and my wife and my children, at that time, I have, uh, I have two girls at that time. <coughs> so that time, we rent the first church. That church doesn't have any member. So the member is me, my wife, and my two daughters, very little daughters. And they sit, even we don't have chair, one chair. Seriously, let me tell you, we don't have chair. We sit on a stone, you know, block it. Do you know block it, the one who build the, the houses? We, we took that things and I just put there and my wife and my children sit there, I preach there faithfully and then after we finished and uh, we locked the door and we went from there these things started from nothing from zero level and after that the spirit of god came upon me and he teach me he expands me because one time i went to the mountain that mountain at this time the government gave us freely to protect and to use for prayer mountain one time, I would like to show you. And then I have been there. So I, am, I was alone there. And I prayed. And in front of me, that the bold hair, because I know in my spirit, the demon came like I see you. And in front of me, it came. What are you doing here? This city is mine, he said. And the Spirit of God told me, this is demon who rule your town, he said. So wh what I am doing, just rebuke him. I rebuke him. You know, after that, for 10 consecutive days, he sent me a folk on my dreams. He made warfare many times. But thanks God, God defeats for me. Now, after that, he gave me this town, Bishof to. Not only this, now I am expanding too much all over Ethiopia. Brother, a number of years ago, let me say this in Swedish, för ett antal år sedan så kom en kvinna ifrån Etiopien eller Eritrea. Hon var då som en flykting och hon gick i vår kyrka och hon sa till mig flera gånger när du åker till Afrika så måste du besöka den här pastor Deres. Deres Hon kände till Deres och hon sa att Pastor Deres vill att du kommer och besöker honom. Jag sa nej flera gånger. Vi tänkte vi har ju många länder i Afrika. Men så skrev jag till Deres och sa att jag ska komma. I wrote to you and I accepted your invitation. And I came here with Beri Skoglund. You didn't have anything that time. You were quite a poor pastor. But since that blessed cooperation... I have been amazed to see how your work is expanding. Now you have, how many people you have in the church in Bishofto now? 
Now the church in Bishop to inside, you know, as you see, we have an overflow. All in all, more than 3,500 people can able to come at the time. Here they are but sitting the around the church. Yes, yeah. 1,500 people can able to Yes, see. and the same number outside. And the same number outside. Yeah. Even the whole place. Then you started in Addis also some months ago. Yes, after before four months, I started, you know, the branch of this church at the capital of Ethiopia. As you see, it is expanding. It's, you have rented a camp. very big hall for yes. two months ago. Yes. Two because months. the first one was too small. Yes. And still, it could take more than 1,000 people. Yes, yes. Because I rent uh, the hall that can able to hold 1,800 people. That place is very narrow. Yeah. And uh, we decide to change another places. So we came another place. Uh, before two months, this place, as you see, it can able to hold like three thousand people at a time, and still it was overcrowded. It's still in the over, middle of the week. In the middle of the week. And now, not only that, now you have also raised up a team which worked together with you to establish churches in different places. Yes. Yeah, so what I'm, uh, what, what I did is after God spoke to me about the expansion of the churches, I prayed and I trained 36 people from 30. all over Ethiopia. Yeah. For seven months, I instruct them. Yeah. And I put all over the place. Now we are putting like nine uh, towns in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the first one is in Addis, the second one Adama, Dorodawa, Shashamanu, Arsino. And next time you want me to go with you to a place, to the eastern part. Wow. Muslim. Even uh, neighboring to Diredowa, yeah. it is uh, a town called Harar. Harar is my wife. <laughs> That's the eastern part. exciting. Yeah. Most um, Muslim people are living. Some years ago, yeah. you hadn't started this TV ministry. You said to me, Yoran, can you bring a wireless microphone? Can you help me with a camera? I helped you with a camera. I brought a wireless microphone. That time, I could not believe that some years after, you should be preaching on your own satellite channel 24 hours, seven days per week. Is it correct? To, are you preaching over satellite? Yes. Before that, I would like to thank God about you because God gave me in my ministry. As you know, I, have, I don't have nothing before. The moment we meet, I have nothing. So... After we met, I believe that God sent you for my blessing and for my mentor. This is one of the biggest part of my blessing. Then, to come for your question, I remember that I ask you to bring a microphone. <laughs> but I have a dream to have a 24-7 channel. <laughs> we start with that microphone, but now, Millions of people are watching. And how many world. people are in the team of technicians? In the team right now, 13 media teams we have. Yeah. We have the modern and the expensive camera we use now. Yeah. But we're blessed with that little mic. Yeah. You know, brought from you. You but know, the Bible is, says yeah. one person can chase 1,000, but is. two person who are joined together in the love of God and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, they can multiply, so they chase 10,000. That's exactly what we see in our ministry. Yeah. That we see. Because and still I have a feeling when I come here and see, listen to the worship, the praise, how committed people are. Even i spoken to you, how you emphasize prayer. You said five o'clock every morning in the week, you meet the number of people for prayer here. It seems to me that you have phone keys, keys of evangelizing via media, emphasizing praise and worship, giving strong teaching, putting a lot of emphasis on prayer, but also how the gift of the Holy Spirit is operating. Many people are healed and delivered here. Yes. Many times 
you get like a revelation. Yes. You tell the name of people. Yes. Tell the problem of them. Mm -hmm. We saw on the platform here one night. I think I will show the photo also here that it was a girl. She was paralyzed on one side. Yes. And her sister came here. Mm -hmm. And you prayed over a picture yes. of the paralyzed. Yeah. And she was healed. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, uh, you ask me about the prayer life of these churches. You know, ministry without prayer is bulky. And mostly uh, people must understand how the prayer can help the ministry. Every morning and every month also, we have a monthly pr uh, prayer program. We have weekly prayer program. We have daily prayer program. And sometimes you pray through the night also. Even at the middle of the night, we pray. You know, when you see Jesus' life, you can see him after he prayed, he healed, or he went a mountain for prayer. That is the great privilege. Great privilege. Because that we, we can be close to Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. We should have to learn from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's life is full of prayer. Yeah. We should have to follow his path. Amen. If you pray, you yeah. are going to have a power. If you pray, you are going to do many things. You know, miracle will happen. So I prayed, you know, I can hear the voice of God. I can, you know, uh, see the visions and I prayed for people. No, we pray for Ethiopia. We know that it is like a critical time, but we pray also for the whole nation so that it will be peace and a bright future for the churches of Jesus Christ. Of course, of course. Thank you very much, thank my dear friend. Much. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Amen. God bless you. Ya Facebook gazachinen profit derese like o hizbar anointing TV ya milawun like na follow ya drugu. Andi hum ya YouTube channel achinen anointing TV channel ya milawun subscribe ya drugu. Ba ya gizew ya menelak achon ya telayu video chindi darso ya dawul meleketon chanu.